Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Friday, December 28th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. A major earthquake just kicked off in the Philippines. There is currently a tsunami threat. Heads up. We don't know anything about this. It's only been 30 minutes ago. Hopefully, we can get this on the air soon. We'll have more information when this goes live. An earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.2 has been downgraded by the USGS downgrade service to 6.9, occurring in Mindanao, Philippines, 339 UTC, Saturday, December 29th. Based on preliminary earthquake parameters and my geologic investigations offshore, this is at a seamount. This is an underground uh, volcanic eruption, potentially, which would cause local tsunami within 300 kilometers of this region the hazardous tsunami waves from this earthquake are possible within 300 kilometers of the epicenter which would be hitting now as i'm speaking hopefully people in this region were warned it is not in the same area at all it is hundreds of miles north of the indonesian earthquake by on a Krakatau, but i'm sure people are on alert heads up 6.9 downgraded by the USGS from 7.2 could be causing local tsunamis in the region unfortunately this is just the beginning of a sequence of events that are going to blow your mind as we move forward in the years to come and it's just upticking now it's going to peak over the next year so anywhere in this general region could be being rock right now in these inner bays any of these slot formations this is the region hardest hit up in this area of the Philippines because this would cause a tsunami to come in here, bounce off here, and race up into this slot. Bing bong. And then this initial shore here, the eastern shore here, and this entire island, the northern shore of this island. So heads up in the Philippines. I hope you're out of harm's way. There's no way to tell, but we are have a lot of science to cover. We have a lot of ground to cover as things continue to unravel on the planet. You've entered the effing awesome classroom. Buckle your seatbelts. It's about to get real. Did you know that North America just had its most extensive snow cover in a half a century? I bet you forgot it. Al, get in your hole! Because the facts are in. Al's in his hole and he's putting the lotion in the basket. North American snow cover anomalies have been increasing for decades. And the mainstream is lying to you. The disinformation is real. This is from Rutgers Snow Lab. And if you're wondering what the legend is, areas in blue are anomalous. Anomalously high, just like I am. Heads up. North American November snow cover set a record for the month in the satellite era. The number of winter storms dumped snow in the northern half of the U.S. and southern Canada, the likes of which have never been seen before. One of the coldest Novembers on record helped keep snow on the ground longer. Let's move on to today. Treacherous travel across the country as deadly storm brings snow and torrential rain. Five people were killed in storm-related accidents as Ebony <coughs> pummels the U.S. Heads up. A good part of the country was facing dangerous winter weather on Friday as the South Pacific is experiencing tsunami threat as I speak. People hit the roads and took to the sky during a busy hot holiday travel week. The majority of New Mexico was blanketed in a winter storm with blizzard warnings, according to the National Weather Service. Heavy winds created blizzard conditions in parts of the state. Two feet could accumulate in some areas. Towns outside of Albuquerque, heads up, Las Vegas. New Mexico, not Nevada. We're reporting 16 inches of snow Friday morning, as I warned almost 10 days ago. How killer are we? You want the facts, stick with the channel. The city usually averages fewer than three inches of snow in the entire month of December. A December to remember. And the snowfall record for December 28th is 4.9 inches. Whew. 
15 to 16 15 to 16 inches of snow being reported from Sandia Park area of the Torreon. Pictures of Bill Sims near Chile. Parts of Texas, Colorado, and Arizona were also under wet winter weather advisories. In the Midwest, where snow and winds created havoc on the roads Thursday, the storm has calmed. One person was killed and nine others were injured when an SUV collided with a small bus carrying eight adults on a slick highway near Big Lake, 40 miles northeast of Mini. 51-year-old pedestrian Michael Paul Donay was killed Thursday after a pickup truck with a plow hit him in Brainerd, Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. Our prayers go out to all the deaths and all the misery created by the times that are coming and we're reporting on them. Winter storm brings snow and dangerous driving conditions and flight cancellations. What you need to know before you head out the door. Al Gore is a bore. Here's Joe Diaz. He's not. He's still employed. And he's pointing out amazing effects. Dangerous driving conditions have been reported on I-40 in both directions. It's snowing outside my door. From Moriarty to the Kleins Corners, state police in both directions of the interstate are arresting Mexicans en masse. A blast of winter weather arrived in the state Thursday night, brought with it dangerous driving conditions and for some, several inches of snow. Heads up, the National Weather Service issued blizzard warnings for Albuquerque. And this guy's doing the same thing down here on this screen. Awesome! He's got his candy cane tie on. Los Lunos. Getting hammered. Estancia. Heads up. Galisteo, Santa Fe, Santo Domingo. KOAT meteorologists expect snow to move out of the state on Friday night, but cold temperatures will be sticking around. They're dropping. 14 degrees right now outside. Predicted to go to six. Real quicks. <laughs> <clears throat> Stick with us. We've got facts downloading. Boom! You're looking at the Arctic region burning up. Let's play it. Look at it. It's going to be minus 40. That's the magenta area for most of forever. Yeah, and that... that freezing cold areas about to blast down into the northern hemisphere. Let's go back there. Whew. Let's take a look. Whew. Look at that. Minus 30 dipping way down into Canada. We're going to be talking about that anomaly. Let's talk about ebony. Ebony and ivory. Yeah, we're getting some glitches. 19 inches of snow in McGregor. Duluth reports record. Look at that. Is that buried? The winter storm that swept into Minnesota this week has moved on, but not before dumping more than a foot of snow in some parts of the state Thursday. The heaviest snowfall in northeastern corner of Minnesota. Snowfall reports submitted by the National Weather Service included 19.2 inches in McGregor, 18 in Finland. Duluth received 12.2, a record for the date all time. Brainerd received a foot while Moorhead reported 11. Al, are you listening to this report? You tort, get in your hole. Mostly rain fell in southeast Minnesota where they still believe Al, who's now in his hole. The Rochester airport recorded about eight-tenths of an inch of precipitation. That was the situation. People in the north were buried. <coughs> rain, rain, go away. New Jersey sees record rainfall for 2018 and Elon Musk can suck it. Edison, New Jersey, it's official. 2018 was the wettest year ever. Ever! Heads up, Garden State, you're going to be growing. <laughs> Climatologists say New Jersey saw 64 inches of rain on average statewide this year, which is 20 inches above normal and beating the record going back to 1895, says David Robinson. Heads up, another Dave in the house. And that's tonight's first 
boom to knowledge. Something with that name. GFS model showing <coughs> heavy snow. Ho, ho, ho. Let's run it through. Let's pause it, actually. The main system is done, but that does not leave New Mexico out of the woods. He more heavy snow forecast in the south through Sunday. And then another system will blanket the west, adding insult to injury to eastern Canada. And a southern storm predicted to, to develop Alabama, Tennessee. You've been bitching, but you're going to get stitching with some snow. Get the shovels, shovels out there, Arkansas. We're going to be following this. It's it's far out on the model, so this could change much deeper. And this is looking like January 3rd, 4th, through your 5th. We're going to keep a close eye on this model because it will change. That's far out. The fact that the Arctic is going to be freezing all through January is not going to change. This is minus 40 is the really bright magenta. Greenland is experiencing record cold, a little warm up here to minus 23, but the Arctic is definitely having a superb freeze year, heavy ice building throughout the Arctic Circle as we head into January. Look at those deep minus 40s drifting across the Arctic Ocean in motion as Al puts the lotion in the basket. White screen representing snow. Extreme cold warnings issued for parts of Manitoba. Say it ain't soba. I love those noodles. Hey, have you had your hemp lucid today? I'm just cracking open a jar of 1500 milligram whole plant CBD extract. Mmm, mmm. That's in the MCT oil. Absolutely delicious. Bitterly cold day in the prairies. Whew. A well below normal temperatures combined with wind cold freezing wind chills has prompted Environment Canada to issue special, special weather alerts. According to the alert, temperatures approaching minus 30 and a moderate northwest wind is giving wind chills to minus 40 in the Brandon Man. That's Manitoba area. This extreme wind chill will ease in the morning, but that is being cold. Bitterly cold. <clears throat> extreme cold warnings issued for parts of northern Manitoba. We just talked about it. Look at that. Serious. Almost like they want to be in Russia. Extreme cold warnings are issued for parts of northern Manitoba, including Brochet, Gillum, Trado Lake, and Shamatwawa. Shortly before 9.20 a.m., Environment Canada says bitter cold Arctic air mass combines with winds will create wind chill values near minus 45 C in the northern areas. These wind chill values are expected to be really cold. Risk of frostbite hypothermia elevated when it's 70 degrees below freezing. Extreme cold warning issued for Bichoco, Wati, and Wikwiti. The Tico government posted today about extreme cold on Facebook. We were just talking about minus 45. The temperatures are expected to be minus 40 in this region. With extreme wind chills, it will feel colder than minus 50 C. That's 14 degrees off of some of the coldest temperatures ever recorded on the planet. Environment Canada says it is too cold for you to stay outside. Period. Too cold for your pets to stay outside. Period. The warning stays in effect till Saturday. And that is a cold warning. Extreme cold warning in effect for the North Slave slave region. Are you a slave? Are you in that region? A period of very cold wind chills is expected to hit Wakiti, Wati, and Pechoko. We just said that. As the wind chill in these areas get down to minus 50. Minus 50. That is not on this thermometer. Zero, 40. That would be below the bubble. Are you below the bubble? Do you know what that is? We'll talk about magnetic 
reversals and your death imminent coming soon unless you're prepared <clears throat> Delhi cold breaks seven-year record temperatures to dip to 3c on Saturday she looks concerned it doesn't get cold here that's where they do the Bollywood dance displaced persons in North Syria try to withstand extreme cold apparently this kid found a jacket this one found a giant broom and they're brushing the urine everywhere it's amazing in northern Syria Deir Balut displaced camp hundreds of families from several Syrian regions are suffering from extreme cold because no one gives a fuck <laughs> but the US government wants to build a 20 trillion dollar wall while everyone in the world starves because they're all coming to kill us look at how dangerous this jihadist looks as he plays in the urine frat quake is the aftershock of the major shock currently we are warning about this is at 60 kilometers of depth this is a uh, close enough to the surface to cause displacement and hopefully the tsunami uh, threat has been updated let's check it we're gonna update this right now real time and let's check out the new warnings Let's see what this update might have to say. Let's go right to info statement one. No action is required. No tsunami impacts are expected. The magnitude is now downgraded to 6.5. Maybe this is a different quake in Tonga. Let's get to the threat assessment. English message two. Tsunami threat message. Tsunami waves are forecast to be less than 0.3 meters above the tide. So these are small waves. Actual amplitudes at the coast may vary, which means they may be completely wrong. They've been wrong every single time this year. So let's hope this 0.3 meters is all that we see from this tsunami. It's just an extra foot. It's like a spring tide, according to the officials. Let's look at Guam, American Samoa, see what they have to say. Check, check a few more. No action is required. No action is required. We're getting good news. There is no tsunami danger for the U.S. West Coast, British Columbia, or Alaska. Do you trust them? <laughs> An earthquake with a preliminary 7-2. Hazardous tsunami waves 300 kilometers from the epicenter still being reported English message two. Tsunami waves are forecast to be less than three meters. Okay, so that's where we're at heads up. It's looking good <clears throat> Only time will tell if these predictions are true worldwide volcano news update fuego erupting today Shivalush Tukono Sakodajima space weather kicking up major earthquakes happening and I reached out to Doug Voigt and he got back to me He's gonna be on the show. We are going to be Corroborating our information now. I've been looking for this guy my entire life of academia He has a mechanism that is non Milankovitch related in the same periodicity to explain the geologic phenomena that I've been studying for decades. And the facts are not looking good, folks. <clears throat> Geomagnetic reversals lead to crustal displacement due to a slippage at the transition zone. 
Now, very little is known about this, and it's been withheld from public interest since the 40s. So we're going to use historic information. I almost acquired every single historical document on this, and I'm going to be going through it at depth as long as well as Doug's information, and we're going to be getting together. He is suffering from the flu right now very sick. He's going to go on Ben Davidson's show for the part five series of the uh, Cosmic Catastrophe. I don't know what it's called. Doesn't matter. But Doug's going to be on our show. We're going to be talking real science from a multidisciplinary approach and we're going to go through it all at length as soon as he's well. So I implore you to come over here and look at the Die Hole Foundation introduction to get your feet wet because he's gone through all of the historical information. He's done research for almost a decade longer than I have. And he has a killer foundation, which you should probably donate to if you have a lot of money. Because I feel that Doug and I are going to be moving forward up to this end game 15 to 25 years from now. And we're going to be unraveling the ruse before your very eyes so that we can uncover the facts to your, for your benefit so you can be prepared and be one of the few people that survive after this event. <clears throat> now, the implications of when this event may occur is I'm going to be 70. But my physical condition at 50 is amazing. So I'm a been a professional rock climber all my life I'm pretty sure that I'll be capable of surviving and thriving till that point to help people get beyond the flexure point but if you want a background come over to the Die Hole Foundation introduction 2018 give them a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't this should be at 20,000 right now I don't know why it isn't <clears throat> but when we get Doug on the show we're going to be going through all of his work from the beginning, Reality Revealed is back in 1978 when I was seven years old. I just got a copy of it. Uh, hopefully Doug will sign it, but we're going to try to get him out to LeetCon. We're going to have a roundtable discussion from the top multidisciplinary scientists that show up there, and we're going to start to put some pieces together and move this forward for your benefit. This is cutting edge stuff and it's all happening as the Hopi predicted. This is the quickening. The powers that be can't stop it. The information is too big to be denied. The Earth. And so Russia, Siberia is on the back side of the Earth. And if you ran a longitude through Brazil is probably where uh, the center of the scene thing hit when the Dutch got hit. But they have a, a legend, and I put it in this chapter 11, where they say they saw the Earth burning from both horizons. They weren't kidding. They're telling the truth. Here's another one. Bogus and, and, um, the inundation of the, the trees of all the forests were swept away. Now another one. At the close of the ages, it has been decreed all shall perish and vanish each week. Now what Doug is talking about there is uh, the black mats. <clears throat> 9750 BC, the event, which they're referring to as a micronova, where our sun goes nova at the magnetic reversal. And what we just saw yesterday was a mini nova <laughs> in the form of a coronal hole coupling with our weakened magnetosphere. And now the FCC investigating widespread outages. The FCC is part of the cabal that is here to disinform you. So whatever their investigation uncovers, it's going to be manufactured from the top end to make you comply. It is not going to be factual. <clears throat> if you want the facts, stick with the channel. And stick with Greg Allison. He just came out with a killer video on the grid down scenario and the bullshit DHS didn't tell you. And he looks like a totally insane gremlin. And he'll be and, a and con. The entire Western society is our power grid grids. It's really grids. We have three major grids here in the United States. 
wait a minute. He's got the Raleigh fingers going on. This guy kicks ass. I can't wait to smoke a blunt with him in my hotel room and get arrested. Yeah, but they're all interconnected. There's sub grids even within that. Not. It's legal in Colorado. Sorry. Move here. So, to, to get to the chase, the one thing uh, that I'm aware of is a great ballistic attack wherein terrorists can go in and shoot up a substation. It has been determined by DHS and a congressional uh, a power grid uh, panel that we could uh, have an entire power grid taken down just by nine critical substations. Now, they, that may be classified, but somebody mentioned this to the head of the uh, Radio National uh, uh, Revolutionary Guard, as they call their elite forces in Iran. And his response was, well, we've already got over 20 targets. Lovely. How, how do they do this? And, and a lot of people are going to scoff and laugh. Well, that's not possible. That's not credible. Well, excuse me, but in... Uh, the 16th of April in 2013, the Metcalf station uh, near San Jose, California. Was if you want to know what Greg has to say, you better subscribe. We should get him to 10,000 before LeakCon. He's going to be there. NASA insider, worm farmer. Insider extraordinaire. They haven't taken him down because he's in a secure area. I'm in a secure area. They could affect my satellite. <clears throat> they will jam it. We will find alternate ways to get this information to you. Let's blow up Greg's page now. Green Greg's. We took it from 800 to 13. Let's get this to 2,000 by tomorrow. Learn about power grid down and what DHS didn't tell you. And come to LeCon 2019 to learn about secrets that we're not willing to tell you unless you come to LeCon. <laughs> we are assembling some of the biggest names ever to expose the facts. Rex Baer, David Dubine, Adrian D'Amico, John D'Souza, Robert Felix. Myself, Greg Allison, Christian Westbrook, Lee Wheelbarger, Thor News, Hemp Lucid, and many people we have not disclosed. Check out our sponsor, Hemp Lucid. Experience life again. Subscribe now. I don't know how to even do that. I don't want to do that. We have a link below. You can get pet medicine you can get medicine to pump iron I don't know why you'd want to but if you're new to CBD they have if you come here during regular business hours a total kick ass staff that will answer all your questions live they have a live chat and if you add boom to any of your orders you get 20% off it's almost cost because we want to get this to you for the lowest price on the planet. Start anywhere. I take the 1500 all day. Do it. Feel better. Get off pharmaceuticals. Go natural. It's the same price. Outsource it. Ask your insurer to cover it. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft heads for a New Year's encounter with the most awesome Ultima Thule ever. Three years and a billion miles past Pluto and we're about to come in on an alien universe. Planet X. The small body known as 2014 MU69 dubbed Ultima Thule beyond the known world as translated beyond the orbit of Neptune populated by uncounted dwarf planets the Kuiper Belt 
and they claim here are frozen remnants of the birth of the solar system. This is the most embarrassing statement ever. Non-scientific. It's in fact embarrassingly science fiction because no one believes it that is a real king scientist. <clears throat> there are no remnants of the universe around this solar system. Cosmic catastrophe is the norm. The shit that's flying around is recent. If you're that stupid to buy into this disinformation, my goodness, you have a long way to go. But on New Year's Day, we're going to see what's going on on this distant object. And I guarantee you're go we're going to blow your mind. And we're about to do it now. Let's look at the let's look at the sea ice thickness currently. This is today's data. Multi-decadal averages going back to nineteen ninety. <laughs> now they tightened in this gray area by switching the median back to two thousand and four. That's to scare you. It's not to prepare you. But thankfully, the black line is exceeding multi-decadal averages. And the ice in the Arctic is extending further than it ever has in 20 years. All of Hudson Bay frozen at the beginning of winter. Thick ice coming all the way down here towards New England. We may see ice forming in New England this year. Sea ice. Wouldn't that be nice? It would raise some eyebrows. The sea ice is about to connect with Scandinavia. My prediction is sea ice is going to be record at the end of the season. And you know the reason. Let's talk about the pole shift. <clears throat> Real quick before we end tonight. Because we're going to be focusing on this extensively from now forward. This is the mechanism for the catastrophe that occurs twice a year. Every Milankovitch cycle, every great year, every 26,500 years, there are two pole shifts which result in catastrophe. One results in a sea level rise surface and the other results in a sea level fall surface. And I don't know why that happens, but the people that have been put into my realm in recent weeks, months, and years, together we're going to answer these questions. Why does the mini nova cause a sudden warming and why does it also cause a sudden cooling? Like clockwork, twice every great year there's a sea level rise followed by a sea level fall. I can prove this geologically. Those people, esoteric scientists that have reached, reached this conclusion on their own don't know what I've seen. So together I think we're going to uncover some amazing things as time moves forward and as the pole reaches reversal, which is going to happen between 2035 and 2043. There's not a lot of time before this catastrophe occurs. And in the meantime, the empire will fail. Because the powers that be have known this since the 1940s. And Doug, Vogt, and I are going to expose this to you in our coming talks that the powers that be have known this information since the 40s. One of the first people who helped start the CIA, Charles Hapgood, knew all of the information and he helped the beginning of the first major disinformation campaign which has led till today, including with the classification of Adam and Eve, the Chan Thomas story, which I have a signed copy original which we'll be covering here and many, many other layers of the onion that we are all putting together. And if you're picking up what we're putting down, 
you are on the ride of your life. The magnetic reversal, which leads to crustal displacement, which leads to the Great Flood. Time immemorial. We're going to break it down and prepare you for the events that are coming. If you're in a low-lying area, get out of Dodge. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> Space weather news still on the uptick. That major event that just occurred, we had the phi angle, sun to earth, maintaining for uh, quite some time and then it shifted back earth to sun and then quickly rebounded back to the 180s mark here's the 180 mark this rebound back to the 180 mark is straight sun to earth plasma stream kicking off that 7.2 downgraded to 6.9 tsunami threat the sun controls the climate The sun controls the lithosphere. The sun controls your future. If your future is bright, stay tuned to the channel. We need you. Not many of us make it. And we have less than two decades to prepare. Don't be scared. Be prepared. You're looking at what happens when the magnetic field reverses on the earth it's chaos each and every one of you is a link in the cog if you have been awoken because of this event and you've been driven to this channel for reasons unknown you now know why you're here you're here to prepare those that make it The next two decades will be epic, groundbreaking, historically, scientifically, spiritually, emotionally. This is the time to grow. Everything you've ever known is a lie. Start learning now how to grow your own food. Be self-sufficient, self-reliant. Find like-minded people. Seek the truth. The most important thing I know is that every day I do not know anything. Keep learning. It is a blessing. Be safe. We love you.